Hi guys, it's Erin from Ginger Florals. Uh, today is March 1st, so it's the first day of spring. Meteorological spring, but I'll take it. it. It's the first time of the year that it really feels like the growing season is here. Uh, we have loads and loads of little seedlings in the greenhouse, some uh, fantastic looking ranunculus out in the field. And today I wanna talk to uh, all of the plants or all the flowers that we're going to start from seed in March. Uh, right now, March 1st is about five weeks from our last frost date, which is I think April 8th, could be April 7th, close enough. Uh, but this is, this is when it gets good. I get to start my warm season plants, um, some of my most favorite of everything, and I can start direct seeding um, a lot of things. Uh, I do have notes with me today because I don't want to forget uh, anything that I want to talk to you guys about uh, with all these seeds because the, the list is pretty long. Thankfully, it's the big batch, um, final big batches of seeds to start before everything starts going into the field and things get really exciting. So the today is kind of a miserable cold day. It might even snow at some point, but oh. But we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get after it today. So uh, let's start. I wanted to start with the seeds that I plan on direct sowing uh, over the next month. Um, I have calendula. If you don't know what that is, it's a it's a little daisy looking flower. Um, it it's, comes in all kinds of shades of orange. And the one that I have, I can't think of the name of it, but it grows kind of a, a beigey, uh, burgundy, orangey sort of color. It's really soft and lovely. Uh, the thing, um, they're super easy to grow here. They will self-seed if you let let them go. Uh, and they've done that in different places around my gardens and I absolutely love it. I'm not going to rogue them out unless they wind up somewhere weird. Uh, the birds will pluck the seeds and take them wherever they want. Uh, they can, so the thing that is a little less desirable about calendula is the stems can be fairly short, uh, but if you cut them deep and let them grow later on in the season, they'll, they'll get taller and taller. And it's chipping inside the greenhouse. It's been really raining. Uh, so they're really super easy to grow. I will set them out. I actually have a jar full of a whole bunch of leftover seeds um, that can be direct sown that I'll probably scatter along the edges of the woods. I'll take you guys along and we'll monitor and see if that works. Uh, the next one that I'm growing is nigella. I've saved a bunch of seeds. Nigella is also called love in a mist. Uh, it is the variety that I have and that I've saved over the years is called Kramer's plum. Um, the seeds, the flowers themselves are very short-lived, but they're really pretty soft white flowers. Uh, but mostly I grow up for the pods. The pods are these beautiful, I'll put a picture up, these beautiful little pods with kind of curled up tops and they dry wonderfully. They can last forever and they had an interesting uh, texture in, the, in any bouquet that you put them in. It's not something that you see in every bouquet, especially uh, in the big bouquets that you see at like the grocery store, you're, you're not likely to see something like that. Uh, so that's these, I'll direct sow those probably in the next week or two, uh, just as soon as we get through this short cold front. Um, and then the last one that I plan on direct seeding is bachelor buttons. Uh, I have a couple different types. You can do, you can grow these starting them in the fall. Um, I didn't do that, although I'm pretty sure there's some that are popping back up where they grew last year. Um, but I'm gonna grow Black Button and Classic Magic. Um, I'll put pictures up. They're just one of the easiest things to grow. Uh, they, they are a pain in the neck to cut when you get around to it, they get kind of tangled together. But it's nice to have something, uh, a little fluff in there that's just, if you can't tell by now, I really like texture in my bouquets and something interesting, and these definitely fit the bill. 
Um, I will only grow a small patch of them because they're such a pain, but we'll have some in there. And uh, they do also benefit from being trellised because it, especially with the rain that we get, they tend to flop over and then, yeah, they're an absolute mess and they'll curl and then they're hard to use. But bachelor buttons, they'll go in this month. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to talk to is all the fillers and foliages that we're gonna grow uh, over the next month. And this is when it gets, it starts to get fun. Uh, the first thing is amaranth. If you, if you haven't seen amaranth before, it's again, a really fantastic, interesting texture, but it comes in some really beautiful colors that are vibrant and uh, make a real impact in a, in a bouquet. Uh, the first one we're gonna grow is Autumn Touch. I grew this one last year and I absolutely loved it. It is a mixture of green and brown. So when the plumes come up the top of the, the plant, like half of it will be green, like a, a, lem or a limey green. And the other half will be a really warm brown, rich color that uh, they go really well together. And they go in any kind of fall bouquet. They're just so good. Uh, the next one is Coral Fountain. I really like this one, but I'm probably gonna grow less of it uh, this year than I have in the past. Um, I find less, it's let, it's more difficult to use in a, in a straight bouquet like I do. It's fantastic for um, if you're gonna make uh, arrangements for weddings or some other thing like that. It is really good for that. Uh, and then the same with this one, it's green tails. I love the color, I really do. Um, and I really like added green, like warm, bright greens in a bouquet. But this one, like the, um, like the Coral Fountain, is, it's a drapey kind, which is interesting, but it's also, it, it's also harder to put into a bouquet. People love it when they see it and it's great. You can make big statement uh, arrangements with it but it's less useful in just a market bouquet. Um, and then the last one that I got is Velvet Curtains, which is sort of similar to the others. It's more spiky than it is drapey, um, and that's what I want, but this one is like a deep, bright burgundy color um, that really stands out. So these will get started. These are easy to actually start from, uh, to direct sew. I can't do it yet because it's too cool, but I do plan on direct sewing a batch of these and the Cosmos uh, again, uh, late April when the ground is warm enough. Uh, the next one that I'm gonna start this month is Saponaria. I think I've talked about this one before, but it's it, it reminds me, I've not grown it before, this is my first year, but it reminds me of sort of a cross between a baby's breath and a forget-me-not. Um, it's just a little wisp of light pink flowers that just add something airy to a bouquet. Um, and they're, they're a quick, short-lived plant. Uh, it's only gonna bloom once and be done. I could uh, succession sow, but I don't know this plant enough yet, so I only bought enough to do one round who knows, maybe next year if, if I love it enough, I'll get some more and I'll do some successions. Okay, uh, the next one I'm super excited about is Celosia. Uh, Celosia is a heat loving plant. Um, it doesn't take anything special to grow except for it, it wants heat and it doesn't wanna to get too wet. Uh, the, most of these plants actually are pretty good for low water usage. Uh, I did, I, I have a few that I have saved the seed from, and I've also bought some, um, actually the, I bought some of the new, uh, floret seeds just because they're gorgeous and I'm curious and I just bought a couple packets cause you know, I don't know how they're going to go, but, uh, I'm pretty excited about them. The colors are exactly what I love and impossible to find anywhere else. So the first one that I got was called Spun Sugar. Can you see that color? It's just the brightest, 
uh, mix of color, the pinks and reds and oranges and yellows, and it's in a really fluffy looking um, plume. And I, these ones, I'm pretty excited to grow. These, you do want to pinch uh, your celosia, this type of celosia, to get more stems out of it um, and be patient because especially around here into the zone 8b it takes a little while for it to heat up um, but once it does these will start going crazy um, and the seed are really easy to save if you have a blend of them you'll get any blend of colors but if you just grow one variety you can save the seeds very easily uh, the next one that i got is this pink chenille these these are it's just the most interesting shape and uh, soft color palette that I'm in love with. I'm I'm really looking forward to growing this one. These ones are supposed, they're the coxcomb variety. They look like little brains. But these, uh, you cannot, you don't want to pinch because they are only going to put up one stem. So hold off on pinching these ones. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm really excited about the colors on this. I also have a flamingo feather. I'll put a picture up of this one. Um, it's just another uh, easy filler. It adds a little soft texture to um, any bouquet. Uh, I grew this one last year. It's called Rainbow Sherbert. It's it's like the the pink chenille, only it's bright colors. The interesting shapes of flowers are I just love, but it's more these colors in this shape and uh, yeah I'm I really loved it last year and it got a lot of attention at the at the market so I'm gonna definitely grow that again and then I also have this celosia this Texas plume vintage rose mix that I have saved all these seeds uh, I'm going to I'll definitely grow some I'm gonna have to seed them heavy because it's been a couple years since I bought these seeds but uh, I'm gonna give them another go. They're really soft pink. It's it's kind of the opposite. It's more the pink chenille colors, but in this sort of shape. So I, I really love them. Some people, it, sometimes depending on the summer, it can be harder to grow these here uh, because we don't get the consistent heat uh, for as long as a lot of other areas. But for me, it's worth it and it's worth growing them. And for sure, in August, heading into September, you should definitely have blooms. Uh, okay, the, the next one I wanna talk about is basil. Now, I know that I've talked about this one before, but I'm gonna talk about it again. Basil is one of my favorite uh, foliages for bouquets. Uh, it grows really easily as long as it's warm enough. It, it grows tall enough. And the scent, I mean, who doesn't love the smell of basil? Uh, I have a couple different varieties. Uh, I have amaretto, amar I don't know how to say it, aromato. It's, it's like a deep burgundy color of uh, leaves. And it has purple stems and purpley flowers when it does go to seed. Um, and But it's just, it smells like the, the soft and warm basil smell or scent that you that you imagine from just like kitchen basil. But it that deep color goes really well with a lot of the fall, um, the fall colored flowers. Uh, the thing about basil, and I know, like I said, I know I've said all this before, but the thing about basil is that before you cut it, you want to let it to start, you want it to start to bolt. Um, it'll start, the stems will start to get rigid. If you don't wait for that, uh, they'll wilt. Um, invariably and maybe half of the time you can perk them back up with water but basil is is one of the best it's one of the easiest to grow it'll cut, cut and come again you can cut it down and it'll flush back out if it's early enough in the season um, but I love it this one's a good purpley one uh, I also have cinnamon basil which is uh, it's more of a green but it has uh, the edges are sort of purple burgundy colored and the stems are also burgundy, but the scent is is different It's not your normal basil. It's, it does have that cinnamon uh, Faint cinnamon smell to it. it. It's something that you just have to smell to believe it's it's really fun And then the last one that I love 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 is uh, Mrs. Burns citrus basil. That's by far my favorite uh, scent wise it's, it's a really pretty lemony green color, 
uh, limey green, I should say. Um, it, and it goes with any bouquet really, but it's that the scent is just intoxicating. Once you, once you smell it, rub up against it, uh, man, I could just, I could just walk around with the stem of it for hours and hours and hours and just, and just, absorb it it's so good you have to try this if you're going to grow any kind of basil in your bouquets or in, even in your kitchen garden try the lemon basil it's so so good that lemon and the basil it's like it's like summer in italy it's just incredible okay that's basil uh the next one i wanted to talk to is cress uh this one in particular i've saved the seeds from for years now it's called Wrinkled Crinkled. Uh, I'll put a picture up. It's really fun, uh, interesting texture. It's just these long, wispy spikes of seed pods. Uh, you let it bloom, the, blo the flowers are insignificant, but the seed pods are what you want, and they, they grab attention. They're really fun to have in a bouquet. Now, these I will succession, so I'll probably do it three different times, probably two or three weeks apart, um, because they come on in a flash and then they're done, and you just cut them down, so something else in the place, but they're beautiful and I love them and they add that something special to a bouquet that most people won't have. Um, and then the last one, well, the, the next one I wanna to talk to, I've also talked to before is uh, Sorinth or Honeywort. I just sewed some the other day, but this one again, I'm gonna do a succession of, so later on in the month I will, uh, also another tray of them they're a really great filler with this silver it's weird they can be silver and green and blue and purple all at the same time it, until you see it in person it's it, it's hard to explain i'll put a picture but they're just i love them so much and they're a really great filler uh, you do need to cut them in the morning and you do need to wrap them so that they stand upright. Otherwise, they'll flop over and they'll never come back from that. They'll they'll stiffen up, but they'll still be flopped over and be unusable in a bouquet. Uh, let's see, what's the next on my list? Oh, okay. So the next one is Phacelia. It's uh, Bee's Friend is the common name. Um, these are actually normally, I don't know if I talked to this before, you can direct sow these, you can fall sow these. I'm gonna sow some in some trays to hedge my bets a little bit. But these are normally grown as a cover crop. Uh, they do really a really good job of pulling up nitrogen into your garden, but they also have the most beautiful, interesting looking, um, uh, they're kind of periwinkle purple blooms. They they curl up sort of like a fiddlehead fern shape, but then they start to put all these little spikes of flower, that gorgeous periwinkle color. Um, and they're just, they hold up fantastic in a bouquet. They're just the perfect color because these will bloom in the late spring, but they're a fantastic color. It goes with all the spring colors. Um, I I love this. This is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, but I will start, excuse me, a tray of this, and I'll probably also direct sow um, a section of it out in the field for a little later on so I can have another succession of it. This one, if you leave it be, uh, leave a few stems be, you can save the seed, obviously, very easily. It'll also self-sow. So if you put it somewhere that you want it, um, just like the bachelor's buttons or the calendula, just let a few of them go and they will self-seed and they will grow uh, year over year. And I, yeah, they're fantastic. Uh, okay. And then the last, the last uh, filler type flower that I want to talk to is uh, Cosmos. This is, this is the time of year where Cosmos make their, uh, make their appearance. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna do a succession of these. I will start with some in a tray here this in a few weeks, and then I will direct sow some later on, probably right next to the amaranth. They get really big and they're really unruly. So partway through the year, I, I get to a point where I've had enough with the Cosmos that are there and they're just a tangled mess. Uh, I will cut them down, pull them out, and I will reseed new one. Well, I'll have some already reseeded so that I don't miss any time. But I, 
they're easier to handle when they're smaller. So I'll just grow a succession of them and cut down the ones that get unruly when they do. So the, the varieties that I have are a double click bicolor violet. They're really pretty fluffy little blooms that have violet and white and a bunch of varieties of mixture of them. Uh, this one's fantastic. Uh, Afternoon White, it's a classic daisy shaped Cosmo, uh, just white, but it has really, really strong stems. Uh, thick, hearty, uh, it, it does really well and it holds a little bit better in the vase than a lot of the other ones. Cosmos don't have the longest vase life. If you harvest them at the right stage, they'll definitely have the longest. And when it comes to harvest season, I'll show you what that looks like. But Afternoon White is a fantastic white uh, Cosmo that goes with anything. Uh, apricot Lemonade, I don't know. This one I'll probably grow for the landscape. This one stays a lot shorter than the other ones. I don't get long stems, um, but the colors are beautiful. It's a really lemony, lemony yellow with uh, lavender sort of in the center. It's, it's really pretty. But it, like I said, it, gets, it stays kind of short. So I'll probably grow that in the landscape, but not necessarily out in the field. Um, the next one is Apricotta. I, I fell in love with this one last year, just like everybody else. Um, it, it's just the moodiest, interesting color combo. It ha it's similar to the Apricot Lemonade, where it has that uh, lavendery center and sort of a, a lemon, uh, almost peachy, uh, circle of petals around that but it's really moody um and it goes with really anything it's hard to find a color combo that it, it clashes with so this one will definitely grow uh, i also have cupcakes blush and cupcakes white these ones probably got the most attention at the farmer's market last year because they're such an interesting shape they're different than any of the other ones they they really look like like the cupcake uh paper cups that when you're baking cupcakes they're these big cups that are the the petals aren't separated it's all one and they they really do they get huge um and they have little fluffy feathers or feathers <laughs> fluffy petals on the inside um but the 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 two different colors there's a white one and then there's a soft pink the blush uh they're just really interesting the the pictures will show what they look like but a lot of people it was funny to watch them do it because they'd walk by, they'd see it, and then they'd turn around and come back to come ask about that. What is that? What? Because it doesn't look like your normal Cosmo, um, but it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, okay, so that's Cosmos. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is the gorgeous uh, focal flowers that we get to grow starting now. Um, the first one, the first one's first is my sunflowers. So we've talked about sunflowers before. Uh, I, I am, I have a lot. If you can't tell, I love them. They're super easy to grow. They grow fast, uh, tall, straight, and uniform. Uh, all of the varieties that I grow are, um, they're all pro cuts, which is a single stem variety. You can plant them very close together, uh, four to six inches apart. And they'll have straight stems with just a, a good bouquet sized flower. If you, the further apart you plant them, the bigger the flowers get, uh, the closer, the smaller. So if you want really tiny ones, plant them ridiculously close and you'll get really tiny sunflowers. I wouldn't recommend that. I stick around six inches and they get good size that are good for bouquets and good for impact. Uh, this, the first, couple rounds I start with the lighter colors um I have let's see I have these are later uh pro cut white light they're uh white I'll put pictures up but they're a white creamy white with a pale center um these are great in, in late spring bouquets uh, I also have white night uh, which is the same kind of uh creamy colored petals but it has a dark center and uh, that one draws people in i love that one myself it's one of my absolute favorites um and then i'll also grow some of the gold lights pro cut gold light uh dmr i think that means downy mildew resistant which is a thing around here 
Um, these are, they're kind of a golden color and the center is sort of a green, uh, green and gold. It's not the dark brown center that you're used to seeing on a classic sunflower. So the first couple rounds, and I'll do also these every couple of weeks in batches so that I have a consistent um, round of sunflowers all season long. But these ones are, those three are the colors that I'll grow for the early season. Uh, people don't want dark orange and reds in spring. They want those in the fall. So the later, later in the season as it goes, I'll also grow, I have Pro Cut Red, which is, it's just the way it sounds. It's a deep burgundy red uh, flower with an almost black center. It's just gorgeous in fall flowers, fall, fall bouquets. And then Pro Cut Orange, which is basically your classic yellow. Um, it's kind of a darker yellow flower with a dark center. They're, they're, it's classic and people love this and you can sell them hand over fist without a lot of effort because they grow themselves. Uh, but those are the different varieties that I'm gonna grow. Um, like I said, these are quick to grow. They're like 55 to 60 days from seed to bloom. I will, I will probably not direct sow any of these. I've talked about it before, the birds I swear they watch you plant them and then they go straight after them and they dig them up and eat them. So I'll start them all in here in seed trays. I know it's not entirely recommended by most accord, but I have so many birds that uh, I'd rather them eat something other than my profits. So the that's the sunflowers that I'm gonna grow, the different varieties and who knows, I may throw some extra types later on in the year when I get going, who knows. It's entirely possible. Uh, okay, and then the next one that I'm excited about is zinnias. I have I have a bit of an obsession with zinnias. I love them. They come in every color in the rainbow. Um, and they're super easy to grow. All they need is a little heat and a little water, and they just do their thing. And they, they're a cut and come again flower, so the more you cut them, the more flowers they put out. They're just incredible and easy to grow. So I'm gonna run through the varieties that I have, uh, which is quite a few. I did, like the other, like the Celosia, I did go after a couple of the new Floret varieties just because they're new and they're lovely and I want to, um, I want to give them a try. So I got the Alpenglow, which I, I thought was really pretty soft colors it's hard to find soft colors in zinnias they're they don't most people grow the bright colors so these are a little harder to come by and then precious metals if you can hear all that my husband is he's cleaning out the shed precious metals it's similar to the alpen glow um but i'm i'm curious to see how they look i will obviously show you guys i also have the benary's giant salmon uh, salmon rose. I grew this last year. Loved them. Hang on. I'm going to close the window. Okay, that's better. Uh, I also have Benary's Giant Bright Pink. These, the Benary's Giants are huge flower. The first one off the stem is going to be this big. Uh, but they are, they're really good about just putting out so many blooms. I had a couple rows last year. I'll have, I'm going to grow at least one more row this year. Um, I, I must have got, I don't know, thousands of flowers out of just those uh, two rows last year. So I got buckets and buckets and buckets every week when I was cutting for market. Um, the bright pink, I'm, I'm all in on pinks this year. Uh, I, I don't know why, it's just, well, Barbie. I'll, I'll blame it on Barbie. But I've got a lot of pink going on. Um, so hopefully, hopefully everybody else is in a pink as much as I am. But I have a lot of them this year. They, they're just a classic uh, market color, so people tend to gravitate towards them. Um, I'll have lots of other ones too, but a lot of pink. Uh, this one is Benary's Giant Coral. Uh, I did not grow this one last year, but it looked beautiful in the in the on the website on Johnny's website, so I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, giant Lilac, another Benary's Giant. This one I have grown and it's very lovely. It's a soft kind of purpley lilac color that uh, 
it goes with a lot of things, especially everything that I grow. I, I tend to grow in color palettes, so most everything that I grow should pretty well go together, and um, this one is like that. Uh, the Giant Lime, I was less impressed with this one last year. I mean, it's nice to have a green. It goes really well oh, it, with the Salmon Rose, the, the lime and, the, and that salmon-y color. They go really nicely together. I uh, throw in a couple of white Cosmos and it's beautiful. Uh, so I have some of that. Uh, I bought a couple that I wasn't, I don't, I haven't grown before. Uh, this one is, uh, oh, I did grow this one. Sorry. This one is giant orange. It's not Benary's giant, but I grew this last year. It was interesting. I, I'll probably just grow a couple. I think I only have a few seeds left. Um, I, I liked the color, but not enough to grow a whole bunch of it. Uh, Benary's giant purple. This is a darker color than the lilac. Um, it's, it's a good one. I really like it. Uh, the salmon rose again. I ordered, um, a couple Oklahoma varieties, they're smaller uh, and they have more uh, different colors. This one is ivory, It's it, just like the name sounds, it's kind of a creamy color. I'm less hopeful for this one though with the kind of rain that we can get. Uh, the white white zinnias tend to brown, so we'll see. It's This was an, is an experiment, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and then Oklahoma salmon, they're just, like I said, they're smaller plants, so the smaller flowers. And I think they might be nice little accents when you have the great big zinnias. There's not a lot of room for something little to go with it. And uh, this might be just a ticket. Uh, and then I have the Queen, the Queen series. These are some of my absolute favorites. They're smaller plants. They're a little more um, susceptible to disease and different things. But they're totally worth it. The color combination, you can't find that in any other place. They're, they're all really just this gorgeous, moody mix of colors, um, which is what the florets kind of reminded me of. They're just a different kind of blend. Whereas the Benary's Giants are all like solid Crayola colors. These are, these are blended and a little softer. Uh, my favorite is the Queen Lime with Blush. It's just how it sounds. It's like a limey color with, with blush mixed in. Um, I have a couple of those. I haven't grown this one before, the Queen Lemon Peach, but it looks really interesting. It, like the name says, it's kind of yellow and peach colors mixed. Uh, the next one is Queen Lime Orange. Uh, I haven't grown this one yet either, but if it's anything like the Queen Lime Red or the Queen Lime with Blush, um, it's right up that alley and I, I, I'll love it. Uh, speaking of queen lime with red, that's the other, um, my other favorite one that I've grown for year over year. Like I said, the queen lime ones, they're a little smaller. They're a little, um, less productive than the Benary's, Benary's giants. Uh, but the colors are worth it. They're softer, more, um, there's more dimension to them. They, it's more interesting in my opinion. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to grow, I've already spoken to before because I just did a succession of them, is uh, Black Eyed Susans. I'll grow another succession in another couple weeks of the Sahara. I'll do a couple more trays of that. Uh, and all in all, this is somewhere around, I don't know, another 25 or 30 trays of 72 plants uh, each to get started. I don't exactly know where I'm going to put them because the greenhouse is pretty full, but we'll make it work. Uh, this month I also, I will also be um, planting some lilies and my David Austin roses when they show up, but I will, I'll talk you guys through that. We'll walk through that and do it together when they, when they show up. Um, so I won't cover too much of it here, but yeah, this is, this is the time. This is when all the really, my favorite flowers get started. We um, we really get a chance to fill up the garden. I'll be, in the next month, we'll be putting all the compost, tilling in the fields, getting everything ready, and then actually starting to plant out in the big fields. Uh, all the cold, hardy stuff, like the Bells of Ireland right here, uh, stock snapdragons, that kind of stuff. Those will all start going into the fields. Uh, hopefully, if all goes well before the end of Feb or before the end of 
March. Um, and then it's just a matter of taking care of everything until they bloom. It's, this is my favorite, I can, I'm just excited. My favorite time of year, it's, it's, it's crunch time. We're getting there. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's it for the last of the big batch of seeds that we're gonna start. Um, I wanted to make sure you guys all know that if you're in a similar zone, you can start all these same things if you're growing inside and even some uh, direct seeded outdoors. Uh, it's it's that time. Uh, watch your 10-day forecast. Uh, last frost is, it, it's just an average. So it even if it's March or April 8th, uh, if it says it's, it could easily still freeze after that, just, just be aware of it. Uh, it's more likely than not that you won't have a frost after that, but just watch yourself. Uh, watch the weather. I, I'm a total weather nerd because I watch it incessantly this time of year to see what I can plant and what I need to protect. Okay, well, I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here. I think the next video I'm going to do is an update on our winter sewing, see how it did. And I think I might have to start doing a weekly or bi-weekly seedling tour in here so you guys can keep up on how everything's doing. Okay, so I appreciate you guys for being here. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please hit the subscribe button and I will hopefully see you in the next one.